Hey guys, so this is the first September that I have not gone back to school as a student in 17 years. As a lover of learning, a lover of the academy, of sitting in a classroom and just seeping in information, uh, this fact is really daunting. How will I continue to grow intellectually now that I have traded the academy for the workforce? How will I ensure that the knowledge and skills I have accumulated over the years, especially in my post-secondary era, do not sit dry and idle? To preserve the patterns of learning I hold so dear, I've come up with a plan for self-education that I hope to maintain throughout my adult life. In this video, I'm going to share my list of tips, tricks, and habits for cultivating an intellectual life outside the academy. Many of these points will be simple and intuitive, but perhaps you might glean new insights into how you can keep learning intentionally when your school days are behind you. Tip number one, make reading a priority and be intentional about what you read. Distinguish between reading for entertainment and reading for education. It's so easy to pick up a trashy beach read to pass the time, especially when one is tired and overstimulated, maybe after a day of work. I understand the temptation. But if you're in a place where you have a few minutes and your mind is able to contemplate and focus, why not pick up a book that is informative and can teach you something useful about the world? Like a biography, a history book, a work of philosophy, a religious text, or a piece of classic literature. Remember that what you choose to read will distinguish you as either a mere consumer or a true appreciator of art. Don't be like the masses who consume low quality literature for the sake of a good laugh or just to pass the time. Read works of quality, appreciate them for their virtue, and allow them to enrich your life and understanding. Tip number two, make use of Monday moments via the podcasting world. If you spend hours per day driving or completing menial tasks like washing dishes or laundry, why not turn on an educational podcast to exercise your brain a little? I actually love having a long commute to work because it gives me a chance to listen to a history lecture or a commentary on literature before I go about my day. Podcasts are a fantastic medium to keep up with world news, literary developments, and events in academia as well. Some of my favorite podcasts are, and these are all available on Spotify, The Rest is History with historians Tom Holland and Dominic Sandbrook, The Documentary Podcast by BBC World Service, The Well-Read Christian with Mark Stanley, Philosophize This with Stephen West, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History with Dan Carlin, not another, Writ Large with Zachary Davis, and Chats Under the Sun with Jacob Bulk. An amazing alternative to podcasts is audiobooks. If you're not into the short informational segments, which tend to be the style of most educational podcasts, why not listen to some great literature on Audible, Spotify, or some other platform? Tip number three. Learn a language, learn to code, or develop some other skill you're interested in via some fantastic online resources. I am very interested in language learning, so for several years I've been practicing my Dutch skills on Duolingo, which is an effective and fun language tool. I now have a solid understanding of the foundations of the Dutch language and a decent vocabulary, so I can carry on a very basic conversation in Dutch. One day I would like to do a more in-depth study to become fluent probably by utilizing additional online and print resources. Back in high school, I was interested in computer coding, so I took free coding lessons on the website Code Academy. I highly recommend that site if you're interested in that. Choose your skill, and there's probably a free or at least affordable online resource to help you develop it. And even if you don't want an online resource, go to the library. There'll be books there to help you work on whatever it is you want to get good at, whatever intellectual skill you want to develop. My fourth point is be culturally engaged by visiting cultural institutions. If you have a few spare hours, why not check out a local museum, library, music hall, or art gallery? I love to travel to iconic historical cities like Rome, London, and Berlin, and have an enormous bucket list of cities I'd love to visit and learn more about in the future. If you are able to travel to sites that interest you, that's fantastic. Make the most out of a historical location by doing your research before you go and by planning out activities that will allow you to learn as you visit. But if you do not have the money or opportunity to travel great distances, research cultural institutions in your own hometown. You might be surprised at the history and culture you find in your own backyard. Number five, find a creative niche that allows you to develop and share your intellectual interests. 
For me, that meant starting a YouTube channel and creating a website. Having these platforms to express and share my intellectual interests keeps me motivated to take time out of my hectic schedule to actually pursue these interests because I enjoy the creative process of writing scripts, filming, and editing videos, finding a way to share. It makes pursuing these passions even more fun and offers a deeper sense of purpose when your sharing is for the sake of others. Tip number six, surround yourself with beauty and intellectual aesthetics. If you're anything like me, certain visual aesthetics might inspire you to read, to study, and to create. Surround yourself with the type of beauty that motivates you. For me, that means periodically scrolling through mood boards on Pinterest, creating collages above my workspace, right there. Browsing through antique markets, watching films and videos that move me, and even dressing in a way that inspires me to study. Something I love to do is to create and curate aesthetics that match the genre of literature or historical time period I'm studying. This process usually starts with a Pinterest mood board, but often I end up turning it into some other form of art. And my final tip, organize your reading and research interests with Notion. To my shame, I only recently discovered this game-changing software. Notion is the perfect way to organize all your intellectual pursuits in one place, and if you're anything like me, being organized, having it all there in one place, being able to look at it and be reminded of all the things, is what's going to keep me going and coming back to it, feeling like I'm on top of things, in control of things, like my studies are coming together. So I've got everything from official historical research projects to literary analyses to video essays and YouTube ideas to TBR lists on my Notion. Just everything that's related to the intellectual life I'm trying to pursue. The liter everything related to the literary life I'm trying to pursue. It's also amazing because you can customize the way your Notion looks to fit your aesthetic, whether that's light or dark academia or something totally other. So that concludes this video. This has not been an exhaustive list by any means. I'm sure there are many other methods and resources and programs that will help you to cultivate an, in an intellectual life outside of the academy. If any of these ideas have helped you in the past, or if you're looking to try some of them, or if you have new ideas to offer, please leave a note in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Always remember that learning for the sake of learning is a noble pursuit and that we were made to reach for that which is beyond ourselves.